A lot of people have been saying that they think my images in my tutorials don't look anything like my thumbnails. So I figured, why don't I show you how I make my thumbnails? And if you like my content, please like and subscribe. I do the research so you don't have to. And you guys help me keep going. By the way, in regard to thumbnails and thumbs in general, I had a friend who glued the thumb and the index finger together. But uh, he says he say okay. All right, so we are going to do a science fiction scene here, and I'm gonna load my DOL preset from Healy's presets. Those can be found in the resources channel of my Discord. And then I'm gonna add a prompt here, and I have added the cyberpunk mercenary face portrait in foreground inside futuristic space dock with spaceships and people, futuristic epic tall buildings in background, saturated swirl and colorful pink yellow green blue so let's see what this gets us i'm currently using the protogen model i am sometimes using the dream shaper one depending on on what i want those are my most used models currently but um, you know that might change for any coming week i want to do something like a 16 by 9 because this is going to be a youth thumbnail so i have an aspect ratio calculator here i'm going to do 720 by 405 and I'm just going to up this to about 10 images. Then I'm just rendering. I don't have a specific image in mind. Sometimes I do. And then I might use uh, stock imagery or go to pixels or unsplash and use control net to get that composition. Right now, I might, I just have a feeling that we're going to do something sci-fi. I want a thumbnail for this particular video. So let's see what we get. I think actually these are all pretty cool. I actually think that the top left one here is nice because you got two people. This one's great as well. This one's nice because of the glow here. Now it's not, I was hoping it could be some sort of mechanical cybernetic implant, but it's just a glow that however can be fixed if necessary. I do think that we're actually going to go with the top left one here. Now it doesn't have the specific colors I was looking for, but um, let's uh, try and change that, shall we? So we're going to take this and we're going to run that through our control net. Now you could also run it through image to image, but um, since I want to keep most of the composition, and change a lot of what's going on in the face, I'm going to use control net instead. If you don't know what control net is or have no idea how to install it, check my other videos on that. They should be in the description below. I'm gonna enable. We are going to use the depth map. And I am going to lower the weight just a little bit, not too much. And then I'm thinking, let's try mechanical implants. Let's run 10 more here and let's see if we can get some more color into this as well. Now we are getting a lot more mechanical implants. It might seem that we are getting a tad too much. So we might need to tone that down. But let's see what we have here. Now we have lost all of the background, uh, but they are very close to the camera. However, I think that what we got going on here, down here, that's fairly cool. I think it would be cool to have one human-like person and one android sort of robotic person. And I like that we have some light coming from the right here, lighting up the face. And this is very dramatic as well. Now they are going to change in our next step, so this isn't final. But uh, the lighting that we have will impact and especially the colors. So I'm going to try this one here to start with. Now I'm going to sell the number one, three, four, five. So that's the one. I'm going to send this to image to image. Uh, I'm not using control that now. I'm going to lower the denoising. Now, we don't have any like futuristic epic tall buildings in the background, etc. But I'm just going to leave that as is for now. And as you can see here in this image, it's fairly low resolution. 
the eyes are not great and the details are fairly blurred and that will get fixed in this step but it will also change the image quite a lot but you could theoretically just lower the denoising strength and get a very similar image first we're going to double the resolution here just remember we changed the sampling method to Keras and we up the steps um, so I'm going to put this to 0.6 and I'm gonna do two batches. So this will change the image and we are going to get more variations, but we will also get higher detail in our double resolution image. And you can clearly see that this mechanical person or the robot has turned into a, some sort of a human-like person with implants here instead. Now we have two new images. I'm not happy with how the second person turned out. So I'm just going to run this again. And uh, I usually do this a couple of times and play with the settings and the prompts back and forth to get an image that I'm happy with. I think the left one here is fairly good, actually. It's a little broken here with the light that turned into some sort of a light source on the right one. But um, I'm not happy where we are right now. So I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to put the denoising strength even higher, which will make more changes in our image. And I'm going to up the batch count to four. And sometimes this can take quite a while for me. It's the most um, time intensive step, just finding an image that I want to keep working with. And seeing as it's usually for a thumbnail and not for a video tutorial, I don't have any time constraints. I don't need to think about not making it a 40 minute video. But this time I don't really have those constraints because if you're watching this, you want to see me making a thumbnail image. And we're delving a little far from where we used to be. So I'm going to again lower a little bit. I'm going to change the prompt. I'm going to put beautiful cyberpunk mercenary mechanical implants face portrait i'm just going to remove this here and say futuristic colorful scenery background and i'm cleaning this up a little bit and then i'm going to generate four new ones now, if you, like me, enjoy just rendering stuff and playing with AI art in uh, well, the evenings, in your days or the weekends or whatever, but um, no one in your family is very interested, come on down to my Discord where we have a lot of interested people who talk about AI art and share tips and tricks. It doesn't matter if you are a beginner or an experienced user. It's all in good fun. Everyone's welcome. I'm thinking maybe this, maybe this is uh, the first part of my Sebro series where I just paint and paint or, well, not really paint. I generate and generate until I get something that I'm fairly happy with and can keep iterating on that. I will try again here and I am going to lower the denoising strength once more. And this is because I feel I'm not getting what I want. And I have this input, which in my opinion is pretty good. And we're straying a little far from it. We talked about that we like to have the human robot dynamic here. And we've kind of lost it in most of our generations. And now we can see more of that. And this might be something that we can use. I do like what's going on with the character here. However, I don't like that the light here is just a light. So we're actually going to photo bash these two images, I think. I'm going to take my two latest inputs here. My two, I'm going to take my two latest outputs here. I'm going to drop them in the same. Then we want this character here, which I think is pretty good. And well, most of the left one. So we're just going to add a mask and then we're going to paint out 
with black here. So if you're painting with black on the mask, you're removing. And then you can just paint with white. I press X to swap this. See if you want to, you see if you want to get back this. So that's a non-destructive way to work in uh, photo editing tools. So now we have bashed together. Now this is fairly easy. Anyone can do this. And since you are a viewer of this channel, you have a huge brain. So you can obviously sort this and, and much, much more. So here you can see the change. Now it doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to run it through Stable Diffusion once more. And we're going to make sure that our eyes here aren't going to end up all green. And you could in, in paint fix this, but uh, since I'm already here, I'm just going to add some white here. No biggie. Doesn't have to be perfect. Export as a PNG or, or JPEG. Now we're back inside our stable diffusion and we are going to take that image that we had and we're going to drag that into here and we're just going to run it again with a low denoising to fix all the stuff and the edges here that we didn't do properly. Now, sometimes I go into Photoshop or PhotoP to fix stuff, but uh, most of the time I actually don't. But I wanted to show you more of a full workflow here. Now, the eyes aren't perfect yet. You can see the white here, but we have the right color and we're going to in-paint this. So we're going to send this to InPaint. I'm going to up the size of the brush. And then we're going to remove everything in our prompt here. That's not the preset. I'm going to say beautiful eyes. And you want to make sure that you have InPaint masked and only masked. And if you want to keep the colors that you have, you should pick original. If you want something new, you can pick latent noise, and if you want to pick fill from other parts of the image, you can use fill. I'm going to keep doing Keras, 40 steps, and now we're doing two batches at a time. We're also going to up the denoising strength here by quite a bit, actually, 0.75. Now, you can upscale before this step if you want. But that will require a lot more from your computer when you're in painting. Now, this is already fairly slow at uh, 1440 by, what was it, 800. You can slowly see the eyes coming to life here. Now, a lot of you have asked, why am I not seeing the live preview here? And if you are not, you can go into settings here, go down to live previews, and then you're going to up this value. It's usually at zero. And you're going to want it to one or higher. Now we have some new eyes and uh, they look, well, this one looked terrible. This one's more in line, but it's a little too glowy for me. So I'm going to change that and I'm also going to, I'm going to put in green as well. And then I'm just going to generate again. Now, depending on what we get, we might lower the denoising a little bit again. Now we're getting green eyes. They're very green and we're actually getting some green makeup here as well. Now it wasn't the desired effect, but um, I don't mind that to be honest, especially since we have this green light that's uh, seemingly not coming from anywhere right now because we have the yellow light in the image. Now these are also terrible eyes. So I'm actually gonna change here. I'm gonna make the 
mask a little smaller and lower the denoising. And this should probably fix our issues. Now we are zoomed in, so it's a hard time to see if we have the composition right here. But these look fairly okay. They're very sparkly down here, but we'll see if that works. Now these are some real sparkly eyes. I think this one is looking away, but these are looking more to the camera. Now they aren't as realistic as one would want, but then this isn't a realistic image. So I think we're going to stick with the emerald like eyes that we have here. It's a pretty cool effect. And you can see in the left one here, it's a more, it's a little more opaque. Take this, we're going to drop that in there. Now we're going to fix this part and I might even change this into a green light. Let's see. I've put in cyberpunk mechanical green light. I'm going to change this to fill mode. And again, I'm doing two images just so I can get something to, uh, to choose from. Now, if it messes up your image, we might need to return to original instead of fill, but um, we'll see. Yeah, I think uh, we need to swap back from fill. We're kind of getting a face here. But we're not looking for that. So let's go back to original. Now the problem is the yellow light here that might stay yellow, but um, let's see what stable diffusion does with it. What happens with original is that it takes what's behind and just kind of works with that. Now we have this one and this one. Now we actually got a green light. It's a, it's a little lime-ish in color. Let's look at what we had from the beginning. So now we're kind of matching the light here a little better because this yellow light and this yellow light and all this green isn't really matching. Now it's more similar. Now I don't want to remove this yellow altogether because we have this nice yellow here and it's kind of a nice contrast. So we'll take this and we're going to drop that into the left one here. And now we're going to take a look at this mouth, this mouth here, the teeth are looking a bit weird, to be honest. I'm going to put in mouth woman. I don't think we will get a man's mouth from this image, but uh, who knows? I don't want to change too much here. And let's generate this. I think the first one had some good looking te teeth, but these little, little accidents can't even be said to be happy. Uh, I think these teeth are way too small. So we need to do this again. This is not great. And this is even worse. So we're actually going to lower the denoising strength a little bit. And run it again. The mouth that we had had to the left wasn't bad. I just wanted to fix the teeth a little bit. But it seems like again we're getting kind of small teeth, to be honest. Now these are more the size that you would expect from a human. This is fairly okay, but honestly, it looks kind of weird somehow. I can't put my finger on it. So I'm just gonna lower a little bit more. And run it again. And this is the life of an AI artist or whatever you want to call it. It's generations upon generations upon generations. I mean, everyone has their own workflow. Sometimes I might put more time into painting or photo bashing, but this is kind of a relaxing way to just try and get some uh, images. I have no idea what this is. I mean, the mouth's good here, but the teeth are non-existent. But I think we're going to save the mouth here. And we're going to remove all the masking. Since we're not really getting what we're looking for, I'm going to take our best image that we have here. The mouth is good where the teeth is. 
Well, they are good, but they they have, they have no well they have no separation. So I'm just gonna take that, drag that into photo P. We're gonna paint maybe two pixels. I'm just gonna paint some well, almost black here. I'm gonna take this color and try to separate. Now this is in no way going to be perfect. But it might help us get what we need together with stable diffusion. Make sure there's some separation between the teeth here. Now if you're up close like this, it doesn't look amazing. However, if you zoom out a bit, it's actually not bad. And not bad might be a matter of definition, but for now, it's good enough. I'm gonna head back into our stable diffusion, put that in there, and now we're gonna try again and see if we can fix that mouth. And since we're fairly close to what we want, I'm going to put this at point four. Let's see if I saved us or if I messed us up. I think it's pretty good here. It's a little broken here on the left side. See if we can improve. Now I think this looks much better. And our straight lines have now turned into proper teeth. So while this is not perfect in any way, I'm happy with it because it's going to be a thumbnail. Now, if you're going to upscale this to and blow up to a huge resolution, you might want to keep working with that a little bit. But for now, I think we're happy. Now we're going to try and fix this part here. And I want this to be some sort of mechanical eye, which is uh, kind of already is. So I put in mechanical cyberpunk glowing eye implant. I'm going to stick with original. Now I want two batches. And the denoising goes up. As you can see, here we're getting a lot more detail than was what than what was available previously, and that's because we're in painting in a higher resolution. I thought we put two batches, but uh, no, I put that in. So let's try again. I think we might be shooting ourselves in the foot here, telling the AI that it is an eye because it's not really adapting to the face, the face's composition. So we might just change the prompt and keep it as some sort of a light instead. As you can see, it's perfectly round here and that's not really vibing with what we have in the face. So we're changing the eye to a light. I'm going to lower the denoising a little bit because we're getting a lot of, we're getting too much changes, I think, on the edges. Let's compare this to what we had in the original. And while that's not a huge change, I think the straight lines of this light here is more in line with what would have been made in a factory. This part here on the left is more random. So I'm going to stick with the right one here that has a straight machine cut. We're going to take a look at this image a little closer. So I'm going to get this up here. I think this is fairly good already. Now that we have an image that we're fairly happy with, we have, we're going to send that into extras. I'm going to resize it two times because it's already pretty big. I'm going to use Langshaws as our first upscaler and Swin IR as our second. Going to do point one, and then we are going to generate. Now, if you've been with me this long, you have a lot of patience, and I hope you've learned something 
in our little adventure here of making our thumbnail for a video that is specifically about making a thumbnail. And here we have our upscaled image and it's now in 61%. You can see 100%. You can see it's, um, it's fairly detailed, but you could go even further. But since this is just a thumbnail image, we're not gonna start in painting or detailing this more. However, I will be sending this into photo P. But now we're gonna we're gonna close this. We're gonna drop the new one in here. And I want to look at adjustment layers and I want the curves because we're gonna adjust some of the values here. I want to add a little more black and then I'm gonna raise some of the mid tones. And then we're going to look at the whites up here. You can see as I move this one, that especially the part of the sky and the light part of the face gets brighter. And if you press the little eye here that you can see before, after, before, after. So just adjust this until you get a result that you're looking for. It's generally a little more contrast that we're looking for, which is what stable diffusion sometimes lack. Might be a little too bright in the mid tones. I'm gonna lower those back a little bit. And there you can see that this one is the before and the new one pops a little bit. Before, after, before, after, before, after. And then we're going to add vibrance, which gives you more color without oversaturating the image. Somewhere around 30 to 60 is usually good. Before, after, before, after, before, after. It's not a lot, but it makes a difference. And I press Command Shift Alt E to make a copy of everything. So this will copy the background, the curves and the vibrance and put that into a new layer. And on this layer, we are going to add Unsharp Mask, which will sharpen the image. And you can see here, now this is too much, but if we would raise this and just press Preview before, after, before, after, you can see a, a, a major difference. We're going to add, put this to 75 and about two pixels. Then you can see a little sharpness. And I think if we zoom out a bit, we can see here that this is basically thumbnail size. Now it's fairly okay. It might need a little more pop of color. So let's try and see. I think what we're, I like what we're getting here, but we're blowing up the faces. So I'm going to keep this. But I'm going to target the mask here. I'm going to use a gradient, which is this one, G. And I'm going to press D and X to get the black here. And then I'm going to drag from here to here, which will remove the vibrance here and fade it into here. So if you can see here that the vibrance, the extra one here, targets the right side here and parts of her hair. And I am fairly happy with this. So I'm going to save this, export as PNG. And I have aptly named it final, as all student designers do. And that's okay. And here is our final image. Now, obviously it can be improved on further if you would like that. But this could be a general workflow that I use when making either thumbnails or images in general. I hope you enjoyed. If you stuck around for this long, thank you very much. I hope you learned something along the way. I'll uh, see you in the next video. As always, have a good one. See ya.